Clubs have another. tried to get senior players involved, but with their training commitments and work commitments in the game, yeah, everyone's we've had little success. Everyone's busy yeah, and. We're saying we're like the us three, uh, the coaching staff of the club. We've, we've had the most success getting them at yeah. one or two sessions, and one session a month, and then another session another month. Yep. Um, and good feedback, because it's it's one day out of their month rather yep. than. Yeah. There's, a, there's another admin that I, I did at Indians when they were successful, and Badge probably remembers, and Liz would remember, and I think he was a junior player then. But um, get them to come out in umpire games. I'll tell you what, they whinged and whinged and whinged, but I made a criteria for all the senior players yep. that had to do two games a year. Yep. You get Badge, Brendan, Susie, all these guys out, elite A grade player, he's playing for his country at the time, yep. things like that coming out there and they're behind home plate umpiring the game. It's not that easy, is it? It's not that easy for them and they enjoyed it because <laughs> then you got to talk to the kids afterwards yeah. and the kids loved it. Yeah. Oh, it must have been a strike because yeah. he, he's this. And he put them on the pedestal yeah. and then it's easier for these coaches to walk around. Yeah. These these players to walk around. These kids come up and say, hey, Badge, how you going, Badge? And he probably doesn't remember his name, but he's saying, good, mate. How's the swing going? Or whatever, yeah. little things like that. And yeah. that's a start. I know we got a meeting at Redlands, and we're going to talk about things like that. What exactly what Kenny's saying, and it, it's an incentive program for some of these seniors to come down, Perfect. to um, come down, and you may take some money off their fees. Yeah. Or you put an additional fee on it if they just want to do nothing. That's right. And you add the extra fee on it. Exactly yep. right. And if if they want to come down and contribute, you then get to you know they yeah, get they some have, money back. Have one senior player do the hitting for us this year. Yep. Have the same ideas as the main main coaches, <clears> and then do the, the that part of it. And I know Phil. Was a part of that, so the Padres they can he could probably implement that. No, quite we easy. have got it. Yeah, so so, the A grade Bates in Asia, um, but, but they have 50 outs, so yeah. it doesn't matter who. So as a junior DOC, I get a feeling going, I need 50 hours from you, and I win because it's very hard for these guys. They're playing three nights a week exactly training. The yeah, and then for the juniors as well in the QBA yeah. program, they go through senior as well. Yeah. So it's kind of tough yep. for them to take a team, but there's no excuses, you know, they can't take a two-hour training session. Yeah, that's right. Or I hook it up with a catcher, you know, if I know Come down and do some catching work, yep. I just go, okay, catches. An hour before A-grade training, they would run that. And all the baits would come down, you know, for our camps or whatever else. So we'd have that credit. And all the time I'm pushing the fill going, mate, we've got 25 out of 50. Keep yep. coming. Keep coming. Brad would come down. Someone yep. else would come down. No, nah, perfect. That's a good way of just having that bank, and then it's up to him to decide who comes down. Sorry, Bates, you don't get something out of it. Coach, the A grade players? Oh, no, I do. I'm not too sure about others. I mean, some do dread it, but at the same time, <laughs> I know. I know. The, the sell of it, too, is, is you teach these guys. They, they're learning all these skills, okay? But what do you learn more? when you're actually expressing it to younger kids. Yeah. You're teaching them One of the best ways to learn a skill is to teach it to somebody teach else. To somebody else. So that's how we're going to sell good. it that they no, Sometimes they are, but that going so through the process, the you literally got to go, go the process, guys. going through the process, yeah, going through the process helps them have that sure. feedback. If, if, if they have to try and get out there and try and teach somebody how to field a backhand and they can't explain it or they, they can't communicate to them how to get it done, then maybe it helps them understand that maybe I don't have so my head around it. You're saying it's at the level, you know, yeah. so you might have a guy who's playing you know, at, a, at a high level and he's talking to 10 year olds and 10 year olds are going, What's that? you're losing it. <laughs> yeah. No, I will. Last and we have it, I have it every year, we had it in the QBA last year. The, the um, what was the, the, the move that you were doing? The Michael Jackson move, I walked over and they're all doing the Michael Jackson move. Now what is Batesy doing? But they're all having fun. You know? <laughs> Perfect. Um, we need to keep moving, we're, uh, we're fast running out of time, but um, there's another little spreadsheet there that I'm going to whiz through really quick and then I'm going to hand you over to Watto to, to sort of wrap things up a bit. Um, this is the Coaching Development Pathways handout. Not that one, Ian. There's, a, there's another, another one. one. So at the top it should be Coaching Development Pathway. So there's one that's got multiple pages um, together. That's Peter Garn produced um, a bit of a summary of some UK research, but the one that we want is just one sheet. In that 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 model that we just have up on the on the board was an athlete development, long-term athlete development model. Um, eventually, what we're trying to put together is something similar for the development of coaches. Now, I just want you to know this is by no means comprehensive. This is by no means set in stone. This is just my initial thoughts about some of this stuff that um, 
I was trying to sort of get together in some sort of order in my head. Um, but it, I, I figured it may be useful for some of you guys to have a bit of a look at. So um, I put it in there today and it, it will be just something for you to look at. So if you see on the top left of the page, it's the type of coach down the left hand side. So we talked about a bunch of the reasons why people coach. Down that left hand side you've got limited to no playing experience and these are the guys that generally play because their kids are playing and they've been roped into coaching there's nobody else to coach. Then we've got coaches who come into the game with at least some playing ex experience, maybe not a lot, but at least some playing experience. And then you've got others that have had a high level or, or have played at a high level themselves um, that come into the game. So just to whiz through it really quick, they start coaching for you know, quite often a variety of different reasons. Um, or they could be the same. Quite often it's no one else was available, um, they're seeking continued involvement in the sport um, or they want to continue to contribute to the development of the sport and all these sorts of things that we identified earlier. Um, and if you just see they facilitate improvement via a couple of different methods, you can see the, the one down at the bottom um, with a high level of playing experience, those who are less experienced in coaching but play at a high level themselves will quite often teach based on what he or she did as a player. All right, That's it, that's all they'll do. They don't have much coaching experience, they don't necessarily know how to deliver that stuff, but they will teach the players in their care, this is what I used to do, this is how you do it. All right. Um, some people with, or people with sort of an intermediate level of playing experience, they either present what they've learnt from coaches education programs or they teach from their own playing experiences and obviously those with very little playing experience um, they facilitate learning through applying the information purely that they received from coaches education programs or bringing in more experienced people with more technical expertise. Um, all of the different categories have different strengths and weaknesses. I have strengths and weaknesses as a coach, you guys all have your own strengths and weaknesses but one of the things that an inexperienced coach who comes in from a high level of um, playing, they might have a, you can see here, strengths and weaknesses. Their strengths would be, this is someone coming in with a high level of playing experience, a high level of technical knowledge, most suited to high levels of competition, as in coaching at high levels of competition. Quite often they have an inability to accept more than one way to do things and an inability to adapt what they present based on the level of the people that they're teaching. So exactly what you talked about. Right, so this is this is a challenge that coaches who have played at a high level, even though they've got fantastic technical knowledge, they don't necessarily have the ability to communicate those skills appropriately, and they don't necessarily have the ability to adapt it to the audience that they have. Um, those with little or no experience um, as strengths, they're often more willing to accept guidance from coaches' education programs and and new thinking and all that because they had no knowledge for them you know to start with so they're willing to accept new information um, obviously weaknesses for those people how they have little baseball knowledge themselves so they don't know anything outside of what they've been specifically given in terms of their coaches education stuff and they have no ability to adapt outside of that so as the environment changes they have no ability to adapt and give them an option plan B plan C plan D or multiple ways of trying to coach something because they just don't have the experience all right, um, but then you'll see in the far column on the right, excellence as a coach is dependent on, and again the number one thing in all of those is a willingness to learn. You know, accepting that we can all get better at what we do, no matter what level of experience that we come from, we can all improve our ability as a coach. If you understand your strengths and weaknesses, you might, you know, align yourself or put you in a position that will be. Um, to maximize your strengths maybe and, and not expose your weaknesses a little bit so those coming from a high level of playing ability will probably end up in levels of competition that more closely match what they just came from. Right? So let's say someone who's got professional experience might come back and coach under 18s or seniors whereas someone who's got no coaching ability you wouldn't throw them straight into a senior competition because they'd be out of their depth. But they might they'd very likely be quite good at coaching little league or um, you know, rookie ball or tee ball or under 14, something at a, at a relatively low level. You know, but you can still be an excellent coach no matter what level that you play at. You can be excellent at the specific tasks specific to your age group, specific to where you're coaching. Um, so I just thought that one's, you can have a bit of a read through that, get some more details out of that on your own time. There's one other document that I'm not going to go through, but this is, Peter Garn gave it to us recently, so the um, 
head of coaching development at the ABF, um, put together some research that was based on the UK sports system that they had that basically describes as excellence in coaching but specific for each of the different levels. So, um, you know, basically beginners, youth coaching, um, adolescents and seniors and it gives you some more details of the sort of things that we're talking about specific to those levels. So that'll just be a resource that you guys can have a bit of a look at. Um, any questions about that information at this stage? I know we've got to really keep moving along. No? You guys are good? Again, they'll be resources that you guys can refer back to at a later date. If you come up with any questions or issues or whatever with them later on, something doesn't quite make sense, just make sure you get on the phone, let's have a chat about it, happy to talk to.